Six Sullivan Center out of Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy, number 12, Dwight Howard. A 6'9 forward out of Kentucky, number 6, Terrence Jones. A 6'9 forward out of UCLA, number 1, Trevor Ariza. A 5'11 guard out of North Carolina, number three, Ty Lawson. And a 6'5 guard out of Arizona State, number 13, James. Welcome to the NBA Friday night game presented by State Farm. Tonight in Houston, Texas, it's a Western Conference Finals rematch between the defending champion Golden State Warriors and the hometown Rockets last time Stephen Curry and James Harden met. They were hugging it out with confetti falling, the Warriors having claimed the West. Stephen Curry's gotten off to a scintillating start this year, a 24-point first quarter in the Warriors opener. Meanwhile, James Harden and the Rockets trying to bounce back from a 20-point loss in their opener. As we welcome you courtside in Houston, Ryan Rucco alongside Jeff Van Gundy. For the defending champion Warriors, much of the same group back this season. For the Rockets, one big change, Ty Lawson now in the fold. But Jeff, when we look at these two teams, we look first at Stephen Curry for Golden State and James Harden for Houston. And rightfully so. The MVP in Curry, the runner-up in Harden. And if you want to come out of the West, your best players better have a great near MVP season. These two guys are going to have to repeat this type of efficiency and effectiveness if they're to advance deep in the playoffs once again. Take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's contest, beginning with the visiting Warriors. Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, the backcourt, a frontcourt of Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, and Festus Azili. Azili getting the start with Andrew Bogut dealing with a concussion for the Rockets. Ty Lawson and James Harden in the backcourt. And Trevor Ariza, Terrence Jones, and Dwight Howard round out the starting lineup. First game of the year for Dwight Howard, who missed the opener. For more on him, here's Chris Brusso. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, he missed that opener due to suspension for flagrant fouls last season. Rockets assistant coach J.B. Bickerstaff told me, in practice, Howard has been more physical than ever. He believes he's entering the season with a chip on his shoulder. He's bothered by this notion of a playoff Dwight. He's been better in the postseason than the regular season throughout his career. And according to Bickerstaff, Howard has said, He's going to be playoff Dwight all year long. Let's see if we get that tonight, guys. Well, he jumps it up with Azili, and Azili <laughs> wins it. Stephen Curry controls the tip for Golden State. Curry coming off a 24-point first quarter in the opener, a 40-point game. Green will give it up to Thompson in the corner, no, and harden the rebound. You see the defensive strategy by Houston trapping Steph Curry off the first high screen and roll led to an open three-pointer for Klay Thompson. Here's Howard. Thompson came with the dig and eventually gets it back after the bat from Green. Azili in transition got fouled and Festus Azili earns his way to the line. All right. I'm not a uniform guy, but what do you think about the I like Rockets? these. I, what are, are they catching your eye in a positive way right now, Jeff? I don't know if I like the sleeve part, but they're different. Yeah, the gray I really like. It's the checkered part that's thrown you off a little bit. Maybe, I'm just so used to seeing them in red. Yeah. Maybe it's just getting used to alternate type jerseys. I like this. They'll be a big seller though, I bet. I think you're right about that. The sleeves as well. These two teams playing a five game series in the conference finals last season. Golden State taking the first three games. And James Harden poured in 45 in game four, and Golden State went back and won it at home in game five. Power finishes strong inside. And that's where James Harden is at his best, coming at the defense, attacking, and then dropping it off. Here's Ty Lawson. The new acquisition on the drive got hit by Thompson, and then Azili finished him off. Well, they run 2-4 pick and roll, a switch. Harden brings the next defender, Azili, to him. And an easy drop off for the bucket by Howard. You know, the Rockets did not 
get a chance to practice a lot together with their key pieces throughout training camp, throughout preseason, and that was a source of consternation for Kevin McHale, who loved the continuity they had from last year to this year, with the exception of adding Ty Lawson. However, that all sort of became moot because Dwight Howard missed significant time with a back injury. Ty Lawson was out. James Harden as well throughout the preseason. No Donatus Montiunis as well. You do not develop championship habits without good practice habits. Azili trying to finish over Howard, and he does. And so you need to practice well to be able to play well. And when you're banged up and injured, you're just not going to have those opportunities. And as a result, Rockets lost by 20 in their opener. First time they've done that since 1982 as Terrence Jones cans the jumper. But opening night can bring a lot of odd results. You know, Memphis got blown out by 30 at home. So there are things that can happen. Lawson picks the pocket. Houston trying to push. Ty Lawson all the way in and denied, but foul. Azili came with the block, but Curry got him before. Great end-to-end -end speed by Ty Lawson going right at Steph Curry. And right there, you have to pull your hands back. Not sure that was a foul, but Ty Lawson driving it hard to the rim and earns his way to the free throw line. Ty Lawson acquired by Houston at a much reduced price, had his second DUI in six months in July, and as a result, came at a lower price tag than normally would cost a player who averages around 10 assists a game, around 15 points. Last year was just under 16 points. Only a protected first round pick was the real jewel of what Houston had to give up in order to get lost. And another playmaker to join James Harden. As Thompson banks it up too strong and Jones secures the rebound. I think the Rockets made a good deal. And with Moutier going to Denver in the first round, I think it cleared out playing time for the guy they want to build around. Howard on the follow, no. Who's going to end up with it? It's Curry keeping his footing. Curry will pop. And hit. You can't give him that space. Stopping the ball with the nearest man. Terrence Jones was in the neighborhood, but inexplicably left him and allowed him just to raise off the dribble for the three. Lawson raises off the dribble, can't hit, and then Howard is going to get hit with the loose ball fouls. You heard Draymond Green plunk against the floor. Well, we saw that he's the best three-point shooter off the dribble that I've ever seen. I mean, that, that is just the way he can release it and balance up off the dribble. You've got to stop him way above the three-point line. And you can't give him space like that. Yeah. Coming off of his body to try to shoot the gap on pin downs it is a mistake. Curry has hit his first two threes as Harden misfires. Let's see if they get it back in the hands of the MVP. Thompson. Here's Barnes on the drive, throwing it down with authority. That should get him a contract extension right there. Get Bob Myers on the line and pay the man. Oh my goodness, what a move. Reportedly turned down four years, 64 million. Oh, then forget it. Hey, then if he, if he turned that down, hey. Bob Myers did his job. He gave him a big contract offer. They're gonna pick up talks again after the season, but that may speed up negotiations. Harden just beat the buzzer and connects. The runner-up from a season ago who's been vocal about thinking he should have won it. Curry pulls up from 30 and knocks it down. But again, you can't. It's three, three great shots and three mistakes. On that one, Ty Lawson went under the screen. On the other end, Ariza got fouled as Barnes got a little giddy. Perhaps still lively from that throwdown a moment ago. Well, a rocket first step by an excellent defender in Trevor Ariza, Dwight Howard laid on the help and a monster throwdown. And if you're Ty Lawson, the scouting report 
I am sure says go over the top on every screen and force him into two-point range. Well, Stephen Curry has hit his first three threes. And we mentioned Harden saying he thought he should have won the MVP last year because of what the Rockets overcame to be the two seed in the West. So many injuries, including Dwight Howard missing 41 games. But it's not just Harden who was talking about Curry. Ty Lawson as well pointed out that he felt Curry almost had the Western Conference Finals off on one side of the floor, that he just got to chill on defense as Ty Lawson worded it to Yahoo Sports. Yeah, listen, James Harden had an incredible year, and I think his supporters, he has a legitimate, certainly a legitimate argument to be the MVP. That's why he was second. But Steph Curry had a phenomenal year and their team had a phenomenal season and winning that big should matter. Howard is going to get called for the charge. And Draymond Green with a great and early rotation over on Howard's roll to the rim. That is a uh, very good call. A terrific rotation by Green. And Howard gets a second foul. And so he'll head to the bench. Clint Capella into the game. The athletic big man for Houston, and that'll stay with Golden State. Warriors out to a 14-13 lead on the Rockets. This game featuring the two teams who led the league in pace last season, and it's felt that way early, Jeff. Yeah, playing very quick. Again, when you play fast, you got to handle the ball and limit turnovers. Barnes over Harden. Halfway down, no, and the rebound to Capella. Lawson slipping one inside. Jones surrounded by three. Eight to shoot. Harden working that jab step. Four to shoot. Gives it up with two to shoot. Lawson will fire. And hit. Great use of the shot fake by Ty Lawson to get him the necessary space to get that shot up. Curry, not that time. But again, a mistake going under the screen on the split screen. Those are just mistakes. And Curry getting a lot of good looks early. He's three of four from deep. Nine points. Meanwhile, Ty Lawson leading the way for Houston with seven thus far in this first quarter. Montrez Harrell will check into the game for Houston. And a timeout on the floor. The Rockets, a 16-14 early lead. Good action in Houston. Well, last spring, the Western Conference Finals featured these two teams, the Warriors and the Rockets. Steph Curry, big shots down the stretch in game one to pull out a tight victory. Game two was close as well. James Harden turning it over on the final possession. Warriors ran away in a blowout 35-point win game three. Postseason could have changed for the Warriors in that moment. Stephen Curry okay, though. The Rockets avoiding elimination behind 45 from James Harden. And Golden State came back to win the series at home in five games. Series clincher in which James Harden turned it over a playoff record 13 times. Now, you may look at the scoreboard and say, well, there's a disappearing act that went on. This James Harden misfires on the three. That's because... The Harden jumper that looked like it beat the shot clock. They went back, reviewed it, and it was, in fact, a shot clock violation. So two points taken off the board for Houston. It's a tie game at 14. Thompson freed himself and did a little too much. Let's take another look at that shot from Harden that was just a hair late, Jeff. And you see the light go off with the ball in hand. If you're a fan of replay, particularly at dead balls that's a that's a that's a big call and a you know the advocates for replay will like that yeah i would say so and those who are not advocates just don't like it <laughs> we'll just grin and bear it second foul on thompson as harden slices in and the follow is good from harold But that's the value of penetration. It draws bigs off of bodies, 
and allows guys like Montrez Harrell to get a free run to the rim to the offensive glass. Harrell, the 35th pick of this year's draft out of Louisville. Here's Livingston and was fouled by Quint Capella. Sean Livingston will go to the line. Let's take another look at that throwdown from Harrell. Great attack by Harden. Brings three guys to the ball, which allows Harrell to attack and finish. Harrell, very athletic. Got big minutes in the opener with Dwight Howard suspended. Taking a look at the NBA national TV schedule. Full slate of games across the NBA networks. Tomorrow on NBA TV, Warriors at the Pelicans. Then the Kings and the Clippers. Wednesday on ESPN, the Knicks at the Cavs. And then the Clippers at Golden State with all their bad blood at 10.30 Eastern. You'll be there, Jeff. And TNT Thursday, it's the Thunder and Bulls. Memphis at Portland for more on these games. Log on to NBA.com or visit the NBA app. Now for anyone wondering if the Warriors were going to have ample motivation to try and repeat, there were plenty taking shots at them in this offseason to make sure they keep their game up. As Patrick Beverly muscles in, couldn't finish, rebound to Golden State. I'll tell you what I think brings about the drive and motivation. It's the competition. Look, at if you come out and try to sleepwalk your way through in the Western Conference, you got no shot. No shot. Too many good teams. There's five teams that can win it, and I think a sixth in Memphis that could be anybody in a series. I just don't know if Memphis has enough offense to win it all, but they can definitely win a series against any team in the West. So you better be good, and you better be sharp and healthy. Rockets adding Ty Lawson. The Spurs adding David West for Marcus Aldridge. Thunder getting Durant back. Let's knock that about. We'll stay with Golden State. Five to shoot for the Warriors. Stephen Curry with nine first quarter points. Three of four from deep. Ty Lawson leading the way so far for Houston with seven. Stephen Curry will come grab it. Quick inbound to Green. He got it on a three on a beautifully designed play. little trickery gamesmanship on the inbound hard denied by Azili and that goes out of bounds off of Golden State will stay with the Rockets but you see the different spacing for Houston without a three-point shooting four man in the game Harold's man Draymond Green disrupts that shot at the rim that if he was a three-point shooter it would have been more of a clear path to drive it all the way to the basket and that's something that Kevin McHale admitted they're trying to deal with right now is Harold gets free on the delivery from Harden and then is called for a tee. Carl Lane hit him with the tee. And Kevin McHale visibly upset. Good pass by James Harden. And if that's anything, that's a double tee. It's certainly not just on Montrez Harrell. That's to me, you should be able to do replay on too. Because Mark Davis is looking right at that as well. He can overrule Carl Lane. And where Carl Lane was, he may not have seen the left arm extend from Green. He just saw the right Stop arm. Stop with the excuses already. <laughs> it's just a blown call. It's all right, mistakes happen. <laughs> Here's Curry, the crossover, step back. He got hit by Harrell. And Stephen Curry will go to the line, and the crowd's not going to like that. That's a foul. It's a foul. You've got to let the jump shooter land. Listen, when you're, you can't foul or appear to foul. You can't lunge as a big man at a perimeter shooter. You've got to go up and challenge up high if you're going to switch and then defend a shooter like Steph Curry. A rare miss from the line for Curry, who's a 90% career free throw shooter. Maybe. Now Luke Walton coaching his second game for the Warriors. Steve Kerr still recovering from multiple offseason back surgeries. 
Two-time champion as a player. Talked about the difference between those 6 to 12 inches sliding down and just how many decisions you don't realize until you're actually in that chair how many different calls you have to make throughout the course of action. He's done a, he's done a good job throughout the preseason. He's handled himself exceptionally well. And we just wish nothing but the best for Steve Kerr and his health. I think a really smart move in taking it slow and not trying to rush back. Warriors saying they don't want Coach Kerr coming back and then having to leave again. Behind the back from Curry, Livingston the dish. Gets it back from Iguodala, denied by Harden inside. Azili can't get it. Shuffle the feet, and that's going to be a travel. The Rockets fired up after a potent defensive sequence. Nice block by James Harden. I think that should have been a jump ball, most likely. Both teams 6 of 15 from the floor to start. Jeff, you've been in that seat moving over as an interim head coach. You know what that's like. Yeah, and it's always better as an interim coach to have Hall of Fame players that you can rely on. I had Patrick Ewing. They bail you out of mistakes as a great trap by Iguodala and Draymond Green. Here's Curry on a three. No. But, you know, to be able to rely on them to cover up some mistakes that you make uh, is truly a, a blessing. And Luke Walton has really been very well accepted by his players, and they're working tremendously well together. What a terrific start, Sage. More good action coming our way next week for NBA Wednesday, presented by State Farm on ESPN. Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks square off against LeBron James at a big night. And the Cavs at 8 and at 10.30. Clippers take on these Warriors. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7.30 and both games streaming live on Watch ESPN. This is the return of the NBA on ESPN. This is your game. Let's take a listen in to Luke Walt wired for sound. If we just keep moving it, it's not a bad shot. But if we move it, cut, they will break down. We'll get open layups. Let's go. Come on, stay. Keep doing them. I thought he should have just said, give it to Steph. <laughs> the guy's on fire. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Hit his first three threes, did Steph. The other part that stood out just talking to Luke today is the difference in your sleep patterns when you're running the show and not. Him telling us, look, it never ends. There is no point where I say, okay, the day is done. I literally am staying up thinking of every situation I could possibly prepare for. Well, you want your team, you want to give your team every possibility to play their very best as Harrell makes a beautiful up and under move to finish and get the three-point play possibility. And so as an interim head coach, you haven't had a lot of time to think about those things. You're thrust into that, and then you have to make tough decisions as far as playing time and rotation. Uh, th these are not easy decisions. Did you, uh, you ever eventually fall asleep in those early days? Two hours a night, three hours a night? Yeah, no, you sleep, but it's never restful, you know, peacefully. It's always, you. you know, what do we have to do tomorrow to get better? Errol's provided a nice boost off the bench. Also, just put the second foul on Steph Curry. Clay Thompson already with two. Spates tees it up. No. Rebound off the body of Iguodala. Here comes Brewer. Transition, that's his game. Harrell, nice collect and finish. Great advance pass up the floor and a beautiful dish by Corey Brewer to Harrell for the layup. Nine points on four of four shooting for Harrell. Here's Barnes. Run off the line. We'll take the 17-footer and can it. Good use of the shot by fake by Harrison Barnes. Good use of the crossover there from Lawson. Good finish. Curry at it poked. We have to like the early intensity and energy from Montrez Harrell. Now he played hard last year for Louisville. Came You're with right. energy and intensity. And again, the catch. I thought he would struggle to finish over the length and size in the NBA. 
so far so good for Harrell. At eight points in 16 minutes in the opener. 35th pick of this year's draft. Here's Spates. Harrell was there. Spates gets it back. This time he finishes. 25 all with a minute 22 to go in this opening quarter. Brewer, nice slip pass. Capella, the extra feed. And Harrell again on the receiving end. He has 11 in the first. But what a pass by the youngster, Clint Capella. On the roll, recognizes the rotation, and drops it off with his left hand. Harrell has 11 of the last 13 for the Rockets. Barnes spinning over Beverly using the size of the post. And will go to the line. There should be two assists. Here, Corey Brewer, and then the drop off by Capella. Both. One good pass leads to another great pass. Hockey assist for Brewer. Regular assist for Capella, and now a technical foul called on Kevin McHale. I'm not sure what he did. And he was trying to call over official Mark Davis to get an explanation as Livingston hits the free throw. And you can hear Kevin McHale saying, for what? And not getting an answer. Well, Mark has a short fuse. He's from the Joey Crawford School of Temper. You know, he can get lit up pretty quick. Did it bother you when you didn't get an explanation? Well, particularly when you treat them with respect. You just want it to be mutual. Now, when you don't treat them with respect, <laughs> then they have every right, you know, to tee you up, throw you out, cost you some money. 28-27 after Golden State, it's all three free throws. Two of them from Barnes, one of them from Livingston. Barnes now with six in the opening quarter. Golden State took nine of the ten meetings between these teams last year, regular season and post. Beverly, Livingston hanging. Beverly hooked it up too strong, but the follow from Capella. I love how this young front line of the Rockets has played together. Montrez Harrell, Clint Capella brought energy and efficiency. Buckets right at point blank range. Iguodala working the post on Beverly. Over him, too strong. Harrell will chase it down. Final shot here for Houston. Lawson burning into the lane, kicks it high. And Beverly was out of bounds, a little antsy on the delivery from Lawson. But playing the two point guards together has given a good spark to the Rockets' attack. 3.4 to go, Barnes all the way in, will lay it home. Beverly waits till after the buzzer so sounds, and Golden State with a 30 to 29 lead. Steph Curry hit his first three threes. James Harden's team answering as well. Back to the Toyota Center, Warriors ahead by one. You shot 40% from the floor, but you got a one-point lead on the road. Were you happy with what you saw in the first quarter? Yeah, we're happy. We're giving up too many offensive rebounds right now, but, you know, Houston's a great team, and they do that. They space the floor so that their, their, their rollers can have a chance to do that. But we knew they'd be angry and come out with a lot of energy, and we matched that, so we're happy where we're at. Yeah, it seemed like this is a lot of intensity for October 30th. <laughs> Did you feel that teams have just picked up from last year's conference finals? Yeah, it makes it a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I know our players love to compete like this. They, they like playing the best in the league, and that's what makes them great. So they're enjoying it, we're enjoying it. All right, Luke, thanks. Thank Guys, you. back to you. All right, Chris, well, first quarter with four ties, eight lead changes. Either team led by more than six is Jones, a little too strong on the floater. By the way, Chris tells us, Jeff, that the technical on Kevin McHale was for stepping out of the coach's box. Now stop with the nonsense. If that's really true, then they got to do that, call that every time. We'll just have a free throw shooting contest. Come on, stepping out of the coach's box. Out of the coach's box and onto okay, the floor. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think uh, more free throws is what you're looking for either. 
J just from what I've gathered Absolutely over the years. Not. Yeah. Howard with the left hand. Got two early fouls, spent the latter part of the first quarter on the bench, back in there with the hook. He's better with the left hand than he is with the right hand. Good use, good balance on that left hand jump hook. Chris Broussard telling us at the start of the game that Howard trying to be playoff Dwight all season long after he had a quiet regular season and an effective postseason. Iguodala on a three. No. And Howard the rebound. Rockets doing a lot of switching. Golden State doing a very good job as Brewer runs the floor and loses the ball. Barbosa will lob it high off the window and Iguodala on the follow. And Stephen Curry and the Warriors bench having a laugh at Barbosa and the way he went at that finish. Howard working spade, shimmied right around him. Couldn't take it home on the reverse side. Jones no, and Livingston the board. Spates given a lot of space. Says, why not? And that's more of his range than the first shot he took with the three. He's an excellent offensive substitution. He gave them good minutes last year. Poke from behind right into the arms of Spates. Two on one. Iguodala and Barbosa. And Barbosa mishandles. Harden might have hit that last. And he did. It's going to be Golden State basketball. And when you're on a two on one, if you're Iguodala, you've got to take it all the way until Harden commits to you and then drop it off. Warriors with Thompson and Curry on the bench right now. Draymond Green as well. Play Thompson and Stephen Curry each with a couple of fouls. And there, a miscommunication between Barbosa and Spates. And Brewer fouled in transition. We'll go to the strike. Corey Brewer, sixth in the NBA in transition points a season ago. The NBA Tickets.com, the official source for all NBA tickets, even for sold out games. Start your search now at NBA Tickets.com, where tickets are always authentic and always available. Brewer misses both free throws, 71% career free throw shooter. Here's Barnes with the shot clock at seven, wide open. Iguodala with the flush. And, and Golden State's doing an outstanding job against the switching of Houston, of slipping right there. Iguodala started to set a screen, anticipated the switch, slipped to the rim. Nice find and nice finish by Iguodala. Largest lead of the game, it's seven, a 6-0 Golden State run. Hard mismatch on Spates, will fire, no. James Harden quiet thus far. Just two points. He's one of seven from the floor. Spates. The jab step. Maybe not the best look. Harden rumbling inside, and that's what he does. North-south to the line. That's where James Harden will go. But Golden State on a little 6-0 burst. They have a seven-point second quarter lead. In Houston, James Harden. Finally making his way to the line for the first time tonight. The Rockets shooting poorly in the second quarter. With Steph Curry on the bench, Warriors have managed a 6-0 run. Build a seven-point lead. Harden has led the league in free throw attempts two of the last three years. Last season led in attempts and makes. Hits his first of the night. And with Houston shooting so many threes, you also have to try to get to the line. Houston does both. They shoot the three and they get to the line because of Harden and because of Howard. And that getting to the line allows them to set their defense. And they're an underrated defensive team. Last year, finished eighth in defensive rating. It improved Harden on the defensive end. The addition of Trevor Ariza improving it as well. Barbosa the lob and the finish from Azili. Nice play by Barbosa off that tight curl. 
Barbosa then a nice play on the steal. And on the other end, able to flip it up. Can't finish. Barnes tried to keep it alive. And again, the Warriors bench having some fun with Leandro Barbosa in transition. I'm interested where Clay Thompson is. He's sat a long time. Now he's coming back in. That, that, very interesting. Well, ask and he shall appear. Here comes Thompson and Curry. Yeah, Thompson picked up two early fouls, but his rest much more extended than Curry's. That was an offensive foul called on Howard, and that is his third. So Dwight will check out for think, Houston. Think about his three fouls. Two offensive fouls, one loose ball foul going to the offensive board. Good job by the Warriors to draw the fouls, but you don't want your best interior player sitting over there next to you because of those type of fouls. Clint Capella back into the game for Houston. Gave them some good minutes in the first quarter. Here's Green backing down Beverly, just overpowered him but lost his footing. Beverly sees a wide open Jones, hesitation, and somehow squeezes it home. Gold State quickly into the front court with their starting five back on the floor. Andrew Bogan out with a concussion. So Azili gets the start. Here's Thompson lobbing it into Azili. Double team comes, six to shoot. Azili needs help. Curry waits. That's a three. No. Out of bounds off Houston, and it will stay with Golden State after hitting his first three. Curry has missed his last three from deep. I like how Houston's swarming right now, making multiple efforts. A lot of switches, a lot of mismatches and cross matches, but they're trying to scramble their way out of it. Harrison Barnes checks out. Iguodala into the game for Golden State. Thompson hooks it back. And Harden was sent to the deck by Azili. And an offensive foul is called on Festus Azili. Luke Walt contesting the call. Now Walt actually doesn't get that win credited to his column from the first game. It goes to Steve Kerr's total record. I'm not sure why they do it like that. Hart finds Capella, the two-hand hammer. Exquisite pass by James Harden. Curry the dish, what a feed. The breakdown, the delivery, and then Azili putting the cherry on top. Unbelievable handle by Curry, and just like Harden on the previous play, the late dish for the dunk. Harden can't find the stroke. He's now one of eight and 0 of four from three. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Beverly. Well, Stephen Curry, we all know his dribbling exhibition before a game, but how does he improve in the offseason? You're going to learn. It's a unique way. you find out next. How does a reigning MVP improve in the offseason? How about with neurological drills? Looking at lasers and helping his brain function on the basketball court. Take a listen to Stephen Curry talking about how he improves. It's a cognitive and neurological drill that helps you, one, takes your mind off the basketball. Um, because when you're in a game, that should be the last thing you're thinking about. There's so many other variables out there that you have to, to kind of survey you know, where your defender is, where your teammates are, where you are in relation to the basket and, and making reactions. So. Um, those lights kind of train you in that, that regard. You have to you know, see what the color is, make a, a determination of what move that, that corresponds to, make, execute the move, and then finish the jumper. Pretty cool routine, innovative, technological for Stephen Curry on how he gets better as Thompson connects on a long two on the delivery from Curry. Yeah, I don't know anything about all that. All I know, he's a heck of a player. And how about Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook tonight combining for 91 points? 
48 by Westbrook, 43 for Durant. Not a bad one-two punch. And it took double overtime to get it done. They do neurological training, too, <laughs> on how to put the ball in the hole. And it's working out well for them. That's going to be an offensive foul as Draymond Green takes yet another charge. And again, that is why, to me, he right now is the most impactful defensive player in the league because he can protect the basket with quick rotation. He can switch and guard multiple positions and he brings in every night intensity and passion to that end of the floor. That is a superior defender. Was rewarded with a five-year, $82 million contract in the offseason. The man Steve Kerr calls the heartbeat of this Warriors team. Thompson on the drive, spins it up and in off the window nicely. The lead is nine for Golden State. Lawson into the teeth of the D, had it poked away. Curry will lead Iguodala to the rim. He got hit, no call, does finish. Better job by Iguodala on that transition play. Two on one, Harden didn't commit to him on that one. Takes it all the way and lays it up. An 8-0 run for the defending champs. Harden has been cold in this opening half. One of eight from the floor. Shot clock at five. Harden, the breakdown. Into traffic, can't finish in green, the strong-handed rebound. Green sees Curry. He got it! What a pass by Draymond Green. The rebound, the bust-out dribble, and then the cross-court pass right into Steph Curry's shooting pocket for the three. Versatility at the power forward position personified. Welcome back to NBA Friday, presented by State Farm. The Warriors on an 11-0 run have taken a 14-point second quarter lead over the Rockets. Golden State still without their head coach, Steve Kerr, as he continues to deal with two off-season back surgeries. And for an update, we check in with Chris Broussard. Yeah, Ryan Kerr has been out since the beginning of training camp with that spinal fluid leak. Earlier today, I talked with Dr. Andrew Heck, who's the director of the Mount Sinai Spine Center in New York City. He's also the spinal consultant for surgery for the New York Jets. He has not examined Kerr, but he shared with me some of the things that Kerr went through. July 28th, he had surgery to repair a ruptured disc. And because of that surgery, they nicked what's called the dura. And the dura is the covering of the nerves and it covers spinal fluid for the spine and the brain. When it was nicked, it began to leak and that caused Kerr to have headaches, lack of energy, so on and so forth. Now, September 4th, he goes and he has surgery to repair the leak. Dr. Heck, this is good news for Warriors fans and all NBA fans, said that as long as it is not leaking and Kerr and the Warriors insist it's no longer leaking, then he will have a full recovery and should be back to coaching this season. They've not given any type of timetable. They said it could be anywhere from within a week to December or January or longer. It all depends on how Steve Kerr begins to feel. But the good news is that Dr. Heck told me practically everyone recovers from spinal fluid leak once it stops leaking, and that's where Steve Kerr is. Well, that's great news, Chris. And Golden State has said they are being even extra cautious because they don't want a situation where Steve Kerr comes back, coaches a game or two, and then all of a sudden has to leave the team again. He's been around more, and Luke Walton was joking with us. He thinks it's partially because he's feeling better and partially because he's going nuts just staying in the house. And right now, his Golden State Warriors are turning the screws defensively, swarming. Here's Harden. Finally got a three to drop and missed his first five and was one of ten from the floor. Houston had missed its last six with that swarming D. What a look from Curry. Azili couldn't finish, but Curry put on the dribbling clinic and then dished it right on target. Play of the day right there. Double crossover. Oh, I'll play with it. And then off the dribble with the left hand. 
And it's a good foul by James Harden to prevent the dunk. The shooting, the ball handling, the passing, it's all as good as it gets for Stephen Curry. Hey, coming up on the Toyota Halftime, take a look at Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook's magic act and an early season dunk contest. Sage and the fellas will have that for you coming up at the half. Azili misses the first free throw, a 49% career free throw shooter, stays true to form, missing both. See, you, people overlook that right there. That is a huge play when you're trying to come back and fight your way back into the game. A good foul by Harden, which allows them to get a stop. Curry, all alone. Halfway down, no. Green had to take it away. A lot of open looks for Stephen Curry in this opening half. He's four of eight from deep. 17 points, five rebounds, and four assists. But when you have a four-man that can make those type of decisions in transition, you're going to be very difficult to guard. In the corner, no good for Iguodala. And Quint Capella, the rebound. Jason Thompson into the game for Golden State. Acquisition in the offseason. His first minutes after not playing in the opener. Thompson gathers, got hit, and will go to the line. It's Harden who gets whistled for the personal. Well, James Harden and Stephen Curry, the MVP, and Curry, the runner-up in Harden, but so far it's been a much cleaner night for Stephen Curry. Absolutely. Uh, and the Warriors are showing their versatility at both ends of the floor right now. Not just in the lineup, but in the last possession, they actually, Jason Thompson outlet it to Draymond Green. So Thompson's running one wing, Curry's running the other, which puts maximum pressure on your transition defense. Golden State led the NBA in fast break points and points off turnovers a season ago. They have a 15-point lead with 90 seconds to go in this first half. Harden sees the C's part. It's a reason in the corner. No. Harden will follow it up. Can't finish. Another try. Ripped away. Iguodala leaves for Curry. Finds Thompson on a three. And here comes Brewer. Three on one. If he can collect, he cannot. Finally does. And Ariza will clean it up. And Golden State is going to look back in the first half and lament some fast break opportunities that they've mishandled that should have been dunks or layups. Green will enter and dish. That's going the other way. The offensive foul is called on Draymond Green as Corey Brewer took the contact. That's such a college charge call. I, I just hate that call. After the pass is already thrown, to give a charge call and take away a bucket, this is the NBA. We want to see scoring. I don't know why they have started to direct the officials to make those type of calls. And a nice little dish off as well. Lawson leaves it. Capella can't finish. Drive the Superman. Here's Iguodala the lob, and Thompson got it right back to him. See, another fast break where they had... I mean, you have to cash those opportunities in. Thompson denied by Capella. Follows it up, though, and finishes his first points as a Warrior. Good effort by Jason Thompson. But I, again, like Capella's energy. Good block, shot block. Just couldn't get another teammate to gather. Houston just 5 of 22 from the floor in this second quarter. Harden with three left, rumbles in, and gets the whistle with seven-tenths of a second remaining in this second quarter. Clay Thompson's defense in this first half has been outstanding on Harden. Moving his feet, keeping his hands off of him, and Jason Thompson was called for the foul right there. Thompson, such an outstanding wing defender, versatile, gritty. Harden just 2 of 11 from the floor. Have not seen Montrez Harrell in this second quarter after he put in 11 in the first for Houston and gave them some really good energy. 
and they've downsized to play more four perimeter players. I think, again, to try to give more space to Lawson and Harden. Harden hits both. He's now four of four from the line. Nine points, seven tenths of a second to go. And Iguodala will just eat it. And that'll do it in the first half. Golden State outscores Houston by 12 in the second quarter. Stay tuned to the Toyota halftime. That's coming up after these messages. The NBA on ESPN, presented all season long by State Farm, is brought to you by Jim Beam. Make history. And United, the world's most flyer-friendly airline. Fly the friendly skies. Get the Curry explosion here in the first half, but they got production from Harrison's Barnes and Azili. And at the other end, Montrez Harrell and Clint Capello. Seven for nine combined from the floor. Everybody else, eight for 34. That's just not going to get it done. And you see Harden, two of 11 in that first half. Let's check in with Chris Broussard. I just spoke with J.B. Bickerstaff, the assistant for the Houston Rockets. He said the second quarter, obviously, is what killed them. Their ball movement dried up. And against a team like the Warriors, you can't do that. They had 10 turnovers in the first half. Obviously, that fuels the Warriors' fast break and three-pointers in transition. He said some of it could be due to lack of familiarity because they just haven't had practice time together, but they can't make that excuse. Well, we see here how much they struggle once Dwight Howard went out of the game as well. Picked up his third foul in the second quarter. Thank you, Chris. And Rockets were just 4 of 15 from that moment forward in the second quarter. This is a Golden State team, Jeff, that I mean, they were the first team in the NBA to lead the league in field goal percentage and opponent field goal percentage since the 80-81 76ers. They were historically good on both ends of the floor. Incredible dominance last year. And that's why I'm surprised that so many people are talking about other teams in the West having surpassed them. To me, they're still the prohibitive favorite, if healthy, going into the playoffs. And after an authoritative win against the Pelicans on opening night, they jumped down to a 13-point lead on the Rockets in this Western Conference Finals rematch. Howard double teamed, and he traveled. Or it's a three-second violation, it'll be three. When you catch it in the paint, you can't go into a deliberate move. You've got to know you're going to be swarmed. So it should be a no-dribble or a one-dribble move into a shot. Fourth turnover for Dwight Howard in his first action of this season. Was suspended for the first game of the year after an accumulation of flagrant fouls. The final one coming in the game five loss to Golden State. Azili pulled the string on it. Here comes Hart. Harden to step back, and that's the shot he was looking for in the opening half. It's hard to get separation and space in this league. Harden did it with the dribble and the body to knock Clay Thompson off just a bit to get the required space to get that step back jumper off. Long two from Barnes, no, and that'll go out of bounds off of Golden State. Harden second in the league in scoring a year ago. Only Russell Westbrook averaged more than Harden's 27 and a half points. Howard looking to Harden. Stagnant possession. And the shot clock at four. Lawson will heave. No. And again, shows Green's versatility, the ability to switch onto a point guard, contain, and then contest. Here's Green finding a cutting Curry. He'll swing it to Harden. Harden, one on two, will go in and draw the whistle. That's going to be the third foul on Clay Thompson. Not a whole lot there. But James Harden gets the benefit of the doubt. 
Even when you go to the line as often as he does, sometimes that happens. And he's coming straight at. I mean, he's creating the contact. There is an art to drawing fouls, and James Harden has it mastered. They're taking the ball right to Clay Thompson's face, drawing the contact, and getting to the line. Right. Thompson's reward for eating James Harden's elbow was his third foul. The alley oop denied. Thompson on a three. First three of the night for Clay Thompson, who now has nine points. Golden State, six of 17 from deep. Jones, and he just hasn't looked quite right all night. Thompson leaking out for the finish on the delivery from Curry, and Kevin McHale wants to talk it over. Great transition. The outlet, the no touch, right to Klay Thompson. Two passes and a lay. The NBA on ESPN, presented all season long by State Farm, is brought to you by Burger King. Kick off all with a new Oreo pumpkin spice shake, only at Burger King. Put them together. Let's get our stops, make the right play. Don't keep breaking down on defense. Easy buckets. Hey, that's great work. That all started with defense. Smart defensive plays. That's how we got out and running. Way to make a shot, Clay. <laughs> Having some fun. Gotta Feeling good. Got to have humor. This is a long season. If you can never laugh, it turns into drudgery. Clay Thompson started very cold from the field, just hitting a three moments ago. Here's Lawson. He got hit by Curry, and Curry knew it. And that's going to be three free throws coming for Ty Lawson and the third personal on Stephen Curry. Very good double team by Draymond Green. Almost forced another Dwight Howard turnover. They got a fortuitous bounce, and Ty Lawson gets the call and gets to the line. Lawson scored seven very quickly in the early moments of this game. That right there is first point since. But one of the questions for this Houston team, Jeff, is Lawson and Harden and how they will fit together two guys who are used to having the ball in their hands. Well, I think they can almost even stagger their minutes some um, if that becomes problematic. But I think they'll learn that side. I think the bigger question is not how do they play together offensively, but how do they play together defensively? You know, your, your guards set your tone in transition, defense they set the tone in guarding the ball in negotiating picks on the ball and they've got to be great at that they got to be championship level here working well together in transition as Lawson finishes the delivery from Harden down the other way Barnes got swallowed up by Howard and Barnes has some words for Howard afterwards and they'll tap it out and that's Dwight Howard's fourth foul, and none of them have been good. It's on the floor. A loose ball, two offensive fouls, and now this. Now, what is he doing if he's not shooting? Like, just because he couldn't get it up because of the force of Dwight Howard, I mean, that's a shooting foul. Yeah, I don't think he was just trying to tiptoe the baseline. Well, what else is he doing there? Curry, the floater is good. First points of the second half for Stephen Curry, who has 19 for the game. You know, sometimes we can just use common sense. Like, that's a shooting foul. Right, and that one was too. Like, you know he's going up to shoot. He just doesn't want to go up and take the full force of Howard, the blow that Howard's about to deliver. 6'11", 265 coming down on you. That's a strong man. Yeah. Missed 41 games a season ago, the most he's ever missed, the eight-time All-Star center. Four points tonight, four fouls, and this is the first free throw. Taking a look at the NBA national TV schedule, full slate of games across the NBA networks. Tomorrow on NBA TV, Warriors at the Pelicans. And then the Kings in L.A. versus the Clippers on Wednesday. Doubleheader here on ESPN. Knicks at the Cavs. Then the Clippers in Golden State with all that bad blood. And Thursday, a doubleheader on TNT. The Thunder at the Bulls. And Portland hosts Memphis. For more on these games, log on to NBA.com or visit the NBA app. 
I like those games tomorrow. New Orleans gets a quick turnaround to play Golden State again against a, a Warrior team that's going to be playing back to back. And the Sacramento Kings get to play the Clippers for a second time already. It was interesting when you were talking with Luke Walton before the game, Jeff, about taking these two games early in the season as one and one. Theresa buries the three. Or do you look at it as two games in total when you have a back-to-back -back this early in the season and sort of think about minutes in that respect? Right, and their thought is to look at it as two games together, not overplaying your guys in any one game. And that's out of bounds off of Golden State. Seventh turnover for the Warriors. Houston gets it back. And again, switching a lot right there. That time Howard switches on Clay Thompson. Forces the turnover. Howard with a very nice pass last time for the Ariza bucket. Nice look from Harden. Jones the lob and Howard the finish. A little burst here from Houston. Down the other way. The touch pass from Green a bit too strong. But look, you've got to get back. On a made bucket, you, you should not be giving up open shots in transition. After cutting the lead from 16 to 9, it's back to 11. And James Harden's a little dinged up. He's grabbing at his left arm. Now appears okay. We'll keep an eye on it. Here's Howard working Azili. Double comes. Five to shoot, and Curry was able to cut down the corner look from Lawson. You see Harden still playing with that left shoulder. Oh, where he might have banged it. Just from Curry getting him in the back there, maybe on the shoulder blade. Not a ton of contact. Yeah. Nothing overt. Five to shoot. Jones. Difficult look. Almost got it to go, and Barnes on the rebound. Here comes Curry. Switched up on Jones. Curry trying to break him down. He does. The floater is good. 21 for Stephen Curry. Ariza run off the line this time. Ten to shoot. Curry takes it away, but caught Terrence Jones in the eye before he did. And the foul is called on Stephen Curry, and that'll be his fourth. Big call. Big foul. That's no question. It's a foul. Good call by Mark Davis. Yeah, the three-finger face, that, it's hard to get away with that one. They usually thank you for that. And so Stephen Curry will sit down after his fourth foul and have a little exchange with Luke Walton. Terrence Jones a bit shaken up after that. Perhaps a little blood. Plenty of sweat. The great trainer Keith Jones taking care of Terrence Jones right there. There's Keith. Been here a long, long time doing a multitude of things for the Rockets. Going to clean up the floor a moment. Gives us an opportunity to let you know Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart coming on ABC. Number 9, Notre Dame takes on number 21, Temple tomorrow. The Owls come into the game 7-0 for the first time while Notre Dame's playoff hopes remain alive. Notre Dame, Temple. At 8 Eastern on ABC. Remember when Temple was so bad, they got kicked out <laughs> of the Big East, I think it was? Yeah. Right? And then Al Golden did a terrific job, and I don't know who the coach is. I think it's Rule right now that's doing a great job. What a turnaround for Temple football. That's a huge stage for them tomorrow night as well against Notre Dame. Harden misses on another three. He's one of six. But that's, those are tough shots, you know, off the dribble with a guy squared up on to you. You saw Terrence Jones going back into the locker room after he took that poke to the face from Curry, who's now out of the game.
McAdoo in. Finds Iguodala, no, and the rebound to Clint Capella. Lawson, nice cup into Capella, who wedges it home, and the foul. And an opportunity here for Houston as we take another look, Jeff. The dish to Capella, the adjustment of the shot, three-point play, and as, as well as Golden State has played, and the struggle that Harden has had and Howard has had, they're down 10. Curry's in foul trouble. They have an opportunity right here to make a push, but this is, Golden State has great, great depth. And Golden State already with five team fouls, so they're over the limit, so an opportunity the rest of this quarter to go to the line for Houston. Nice look from Green. Livingston denied at the rim by Capella. Looked like there was a lot of contact there. Harden out of traffic to Lawson. He thought about it. No look to Brewer. Extra feed, and Capella couldn't handle it. Good cut by Livingston. No call right there. And Houston follows it up with its 13th turnover of the night. Thompson slides it into McAdoo. No, McAdoo fighting, but Capella ends up with it. Then he went to save it and stepped out of bounds. Again, Houston's gone to four smalls and Capella. And, they, you know, why no Montrez Harrell? Yeah. I would say because they're looking to find space on the floor for Lawson and Harden to be able to attack. Iguodala connects on the three. Good pass by Draymond Green. Green now with four assists to go with five points, five rebounds. Iguodala has nine points. Curry leads the way for Golden State with 21. He's on the bench with four fouls. Ariza buries another three. They're going to check that one at the next timeout. Thompson drives by Brewer, banks it up no, and Capella able to redirect from Green. Rockets have trailed by as many as 16. Harden got the step, and he knew he had them right where he wanted them once he did. He just does an outstanding job searching out contact. Here, the blow by of Green, and he just heads right to McAdoo's body to draw the foul. You could see him, his eyes searching out the way to engage McAdoo as he lifted into the air. Wednesday night, 6 of 21 from the floor, 3 of 13 so far tonight, but he always... Does some work at the line. And now six of seven from the line tonight as Dwight Howard will come back in with those four fouls. We'll step aside a moment. Houston trying to build something in this third quarter. They've cut it to nine. That, Jeff. Stan getting it done in the early season here. Winning some close games. Missed 14 free throws tonight and still able to beat the Bulls. And the Bulls' new offense holding them to 94 points in overtime. Pretty good job from that Pistons defense. I think, I think they have won three straight games to start the season and have shot under 30% or under 40% in all three. That's hard to do in the NBA. Yeah. That's playing some defense. Houston trying to get back in this one. The backdoor cut, denied, loose ball, ends up with Azili. Eight-point game, Warriors have led by as many as 16. Curry on the bench with four fouls. Here's Draymond Green off the back leg and caught it to go. Rainbow touch. Did the Dirk. They got to find Howard. He was wide open yeah. right under the rim. You Me. want your big to run rim to rim and seal. He's much less effective on the block. And he was visibly frustrated with not getting it. Brewer finds Beverly in the corner. No. Green quick outlet to Iguodala, but Houston is back. 
Here's Green giving space. Nice look underneath. Azili can't finish. And then Harden the rebound. Harden. Halfway down and out. James Harden now one of seven from three and just three of 14 from the floor. Green denied by Howard. Green working Beverly and got fouled using his size on Patrick Beverly and earning a trip to the line. So Draymond Green, just your regular Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, so many people are now shooting that shot. When you first saw Dirk do it, you were like, what is that? And he had such great balance, length, and touch that NBA players, listen, it's a copycat league from coach's standpoint and also players. If you see something that works, and that allows guys to create Again, just enough space to get shots off. Well, you see the Rockets last season made over 11 threes a game. Tonight, just four thus far. They shattered the NBA record for three-pointers attempted per game last year by nearly five attempts per contest. Shot just under 33 a game. Here's Barbosa. Out there with Green, Azili, Livingston, and Iguodala. And it'll stay with Golden State. Still plenty of time to operate. That's one of the challenges for this Rockets team, Jeff. You brought it up before. They love shooting threes. You see Green check out. But without having the stretch four on the floor anymore, clogging the lane, they don't have their driving lanes, and... They don't have as many of those respected three-point shooters. And, and that's where Monte Yunus is so important as Iguodala with a beautiful feed off the dribble penetration to Zili. And that's where his return to health is so critical for this team. He has such versatility. He can score inside and out. Very good passer. Shot it well from three last year at 37%. Right now out with more back troubles, and there's no real timetable for when exactly he'll be back. Bit of a force there from Howard. Put it up with too much velocity. Golden State with a 13-point lead. They've held the fort with Curry on the bench with his fourth foul. Barbosa. You bet. And Golden State does such a beautiful job when they throw the ball into the low post, they run split action. There was confusion on the action, which led to the wide open Barbosa three. An 8-0 Golden State run. Their lead is back to 16 without Curry. Very impressive. Three to shoot. Ariza is going to heave. No. Beverly. And Azili down in the backcourt. Here comes Barnes. That's a three. Iguodala keeps it alive, and Golden State can reset. 25 seconds left in the third. And after cutting it to eight, the Rockets looking at a 16-point deficit. Barbosa curling around. Barnes just missed time the leap. Eight seconds left in the quarter. Brewer slicing all the way to the rim and denied by Azil. One second left in the quarter. Harden. No. Third quarter comes to a close. Azili receiving praise after an emphatic block. It's all Warriors so far at Toyota Center. They lead by 16 as we head to the fourth. Welcome back to Houston. Coach, you cut it to eight and then it kind of got away from you. Well, what happened? Threes. We had some switches that we didn't. We had some mistakes defensively. Offensively, you haven't been able to get a rhythm. How do you get that going in the fourth? Two on the ball, we got to move the ball, and we got to cut and move ourselves. We're just stagnant right now. Thanks, Coach. Guys, back to you. Well, obviously frustrated Kevin McHale, who <laughs> saw his team lose by 20 in their opener. First time the Rockets had lost by that many since 1982 in a season opener. And tonight, missed their last seven field goals. Warriors closed on an 8-0 run, and they have a 16-point lead. But I think tonight his frustration is 
less about energy and effort and some of just mistakes that they can clean up. Game one, they just didn't play with the requisite energy to be great. And they didn't have Dwight Howard as well. I mean, you know, suspensions and injuries are a huge factor. The Rockets really didn't have Ty Lawson, Howard. Oh, and Lawson and Howard run into each other. They didn't really practice together. Kevin McHale thought maybe they had two practices together, Lawson and Howard, in the preseason. Yeah, well, it, if you can't work together and you can't develop championship habits, you're going to have some nights like they had against him. Hard missed time in the preseason as well. Here's Lawson using the Howard screen. Gets it back to him on the roll. Stripped away by Spates. And six to shoot for Houston. But that was a very nice play by Ty Lawson. Little pocket bounce pass that Howard got stripped on, but still an outstanding play by Lawson. And that's going to be a foul on the floor against Spates. And Howard with a little exchange in the aftermath of that whistle. Second foul on Maurice Spates. Stephen Curry still getting to chill on the bench with his fourth foul. His team has been able to maintain its 16-point lead with him out. Brewer on a three. He shoots them often and not necessarily at a high percentage, but big three to start the fourth for Houston. Livingston working Lawson and drew the foul. And I'm surprised they have Lawson on Livingston knowing that he'll go into the post instead of putting Lawson on Barbosa and Beverly on Livingston. An excellent spin by Livingston off the body of Lawson. He's very effective with his length and high release down in the low post. He has been one of the best post scoring guards in the league over the last couple of years since he had his rebirth in Brooklyn under Jason Kidd. An excellent finisher around the rim as well and a ring in his first year with Golden State. He hits both free throws here. Montrez Harrell starting this fourth quarter after not playing in the second or third, despite scoring 11 in the first. Lawson got the whistle nearly finished. He goes to the line. Let's check in with Chris. Yeah, guys, Terrence Jones, you saw him head to the locker room after getting hit in the eye. He's got a cut on his eyelid. He's being stitched up in the back right now. They're going to try to get him out here uh, in a few minutes to see if he can play the remainder of the game. Well, Jones took a scrape from Stephen Curry. He was another one of the Rockets who dealt with injuries for such a huge chunk of last season. Jones only played in 33 games. He got off to a scorching start in the season and then dealt with a hard-to-define nerve contusion that they just couldn't quite get a grasp of, and it kept him out for a while, and then eventually had a collapsed lung as well. So the luck continues for Jones as Barnes cashes in after Lawson missed both free throws. That was well defended by Harrell, but a big time shot by Harrison Barnes, a little floater going to his left. Howard denied by Spates. He's done a nice job on Howard in this fourth. Here comes Barnes, trying to shake free of Harrell. Popped out. Beverly and Lawson playing together. Luke Walton isn't careful. He's going to get a technical. I think he's out of the coach's box over there. Dangerously close. Howard finishes. Walton wanted a foul. No call. Well, it's something. When two big bodies collide like that, it's something. That certainly wasn't a flop. It was a charge. 
Spates hit the deck hard, and now Brewer will get hit with a whistle on the other end. Let's take another look at that, Jeff. I mean... <laughs> I mean, and then we call the little pass and then, like, the half collision. I, sometimes I just don't get what we're calling in this league anymore when it bit, comes to block charge. Yeah, there was a bit of an extension with the left arm there. And now Spates gets fouled on the other end by Beverly, and that is going to be Patrick Beverly's fifth personal. And so Spates will go to the line. Hey, stick around for Sports Center at night after we're done here. Scott Van Pelt recaps game three of the World Series between the Royals and the Mets, plus highlights from a busy night in the NBA. Sports Center at night tipping off when we finish here. If Scott Van Pelt doesn't lead with the Pistons at 3-0, he goes with the World Series. I'll be very disappointed. I think you're scheduled to join him, aren't you? So you might be able to make those kind of demands. Nice floater by Corey Brewer from the free throw line. I like SBP Sports Center. Oh, he's very talented. Barbosa, nice pocket pass to Spates, who cans the jumper. And Spates now with 10 points off the bench. Beverly, no, and Howard pushed off. That's going to be his fifth. And, and he argues these, and these are clearly fouls. Number five on Howard. Golden State leads by 17. The NBA on ESPN is presented all season long by State Farm. We exist to assist. Join us next week for NBA Wednesday presented by State Farm on ESPN. Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks squaring off against LeBron James and the Cavs at 8th and at 10.30. The Clippers take on the Warriors. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7.30. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN. This is the return of the NBA on ESPN. This is your game. Stephen Curry back in. Iguodala finds Spates and the two-hand half. Unnecessary gamble opened up the driving lane for Iguodala, and we know what a passer he is. Lawson can't hit. Houston gets the follow, though, from Patrick Beverly. The Rockets, 5 of 18 from three-point range. Spates, no, and Brewer the rebound. A tight first quarter, and then Golden State exploded in the second and has been in control ever since. Lawson ducks under, banks it off, and the rebound grab by Spates. Can Green catch up with it? He can to Curry for two. I just love Draymond Green. I just love how he competes, the passing skills, the court awareness, the toughness. He does so many things well, Jeff. He really does. He's just... That's why you get five years, 82 million. And you do what he does and you win a championship. That will always get you paid. Curry finds Spates and the finish. Beautiful look from Curry and Maurice Spates having a huge fourth quarter. Harrell down the other way, denied by Green, who gets locked up with Harrell, but a foul on Golden State. Looks like it's going out of bounds. Just great awareness. Curry follows the play and gets his easiest bucket of the night. Green with four assists, six points, eight points, six rebounds for Draymond Green. We're used to complete lines like that from him. Had a triple-double in 
the clinching game of the finals, game six at Cleveland. It was the first Warrior with a playoff triple-double since Guy Rogers back in 1962. Curry with 23 points, six assists, five rebounds. Started hitting his first three from deep. Here's Iguodala. You bet. Another three. And the lead is ballooned to 22. Harden still cannot find the range tonight as Curry flags down the rebound. A 22-point Golden State Warriors lead. Stephen Curry, all smiles tonight. He'll tell you what he did his summer. Coming up next. MVP and a world champion do with his summer. What's the most fun part of it? Well, let's find out from Stephen Curry. Well, besides welcome my new daughter to this world, um, which is obviously the best blessing ever, um, playing golf with the president, that was probably my, my favorite moment. It was, a, it was a call that came kind of on a whim. We had talked about it in February when I went to the White House um, talking about malaria. And he's like, hey, this summer you want to play? And obviously I, I think it's kind of like an off kind of comment. Like he maybe throws that out to a lot of people. Um, but I got a call in, in July. I said, hey, can you make it to Martha's Vineyard? The answer was definitely yes. So I got to uh, take my dad, my whole family out there to meet him. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, five hours on the golf course with the president um, was, was uh, a very, very uh, memorable experience. And ice in the veins for Curry. Shot a 75. That's good. But you know what I was thinking? The president probably loves to golf because he never gets to drive. He probably hasn't driven in eight years. And he gets to drive on the golf course. Well, you know, I bet you he just loves that control where he's not at the mercy of drivers all the time. Stefan was funny about that, saying, I got the president to be my chauffeur. Because he was the one driving the cart the entire round. It's not often that you get a president as your chauffeur. Del Curry is a great golfer yep. and a great shooter. So is his son. Who was the fourth? Ray Allen was the other member of the foursome. So I don't know who won the golf, but I know who would come in fourth in a shooting contest <laughs> in that foursome, and that's the president. I think the president came in fourth on the golf course as well, but he shot an 84, very respectable. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Especially how much golf can you get to play when you're running the, the free world? Yeah, probably not as much as you'd like. Who's the, the biggest name you've golfed with, Jeff, in your golfing prowess back in the day? Ray Anderson. It's just a guy in Houston. That's the biggest <laughs> name. My man Ray at Memorial. I, I do the Muni golf. I'm not worthy of a fancy course. <laughs> Ray's a good partner, though, isn't he? You know, Ray's like me. He's old, but uh, not like me in this way. He hits everything 175 yards straight. Me, I'll hit it 175 yards. And you're, you're very safe if you're in the middle of the fairway because it's not going there. When there's not that huge separation between nine iron and driver, that's dangerous. Well, that's bad golf. Curry gets loose. Stephen Curry with 25 now. And again, the versatility of Green. Now he's playing downside center. He makes the pass. Got seven assists tonight, seven rebounds. Nine points. Curry, meanwhile, has his 11th consecutive game against the Rockets with at least 20 points and five assists. And now putting on a little show. The three. Oh, halfway down, and it just popped out. Harrell can't finish. That might have been Curry's last chance at a highlight tonight because with a game tomorrow, it might be time to empty the bench. Can you take a look at oh, is that sweet? Stephen Curry's. New baby Ryan with Riley. Mama Curry there as well. Stefan's outnumbered in that house now. Just wait till they become teenage girls. Yeah. He said Riley loves being a big sister right now. 
You became a rock star last postseason. I saw her dancing. They did. They, he the, put out something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the whip and the nene. Is that one dance or is that two different dances? No, no, it's one dance. It's like it would be odd to see someone do the whip without the nene. Oh, okay. Or the nene without the whip. Yeah, I didn't know, but I was just like watching. They said that. Yeah. She was pretty good at it. She's very cute. Yes, adorable. She's got a personality. <laughs> Harden will check out. Rough night for him. One of 10 from three, four of 18 from the floor. Did have 16 points, seven rebounds, five assists. Time to look at the iPad for Dwight Howard. Five fouls and just nine points for Howard. You know, and Howard had an up and down year last year. And the minutes, obviously, he, he's not hes not as healthy. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be as dominant as he was in Orlando. But he's, he's got to be consistently good and really good for them to have a chance to win it all. And that's active at both ends, less turnovers, you know, more intelligent use of his fouls, being as important as he is to their chances as Brandon Rush Rims out of three. KJ McDaniels into the game for Houston, storming down four for two. Well, and with Howard, Jeff, he's talked about the minutes limit or the minutes restrictions the Rockets may be aware of. And there is no specific limit that Kevin McHale has to adhere to, but it's just something they're going to be conscious of as Rush flips that one home. And Howard said, look, people are talking about me like I'm I'm really old. we got to be so careful with me. Well, I plan to play another 10 years. I'm not that old, guys. I'm just just turning 30 this December. But I do think it's different for those guys who come out. Sure. As he did out of high school where the, the minutes and the number of games start to pile it up. I don't, I don't think it's the chronological age as much as the wear and tear. It's his 12th year in the league. A lot of long postseason trips, too, early in his career with Stan Van Gundy's Magic teams. Right, and he's played big minutes, and he's been... Listen, there was a time period where he was as valuable to his team as any player in the league. Now, he never won it, mm -hmm. but you could have made a case for him each and every year, and he had to get a lot of responsibility. Three-time Defensive Player of the Year, three consecutive years when he was in Orlando. Here's Clark off on a three. How about Golden State's defense tonight? They've held the Rockets under 36% shooting. McDaniels will see that number drop. And I like John Michael McAdoo mm. for the Warriors win teams downsize. He's got quickness, mobility, awareness. In the few minutes he got last year, I thought he handled himself well, played well in the D League, and I think in the preseason this year, he's played well. I think he's going to be a piece that gives them occasional spot minutes and important ones. One of the rare players to win a D League title and an NBA title in the same season. Arrow with the sidestep and the flush. He's had some nice standout minutes tonight for Houston. 13 points on 6 of 8 shooting. Barbosa doesn't get the roll and up the ladder went James Michael McAdoo for the foul. It's all Warriors here in Houston. They lead by 21. Welcome back to NBA Friday, presented by State Farm. The Warriors pummeling the Rockets tonight, 105-84. Now, how were they built, these teams meeting in the conference finals a year ago? Warriors built differently, though, all through the draft. Stephen Curry in 09, then Klay Thompson in 2011, and both Green and Barnes in 2012. Meanwhile, for the Rockets, you got to go into the war room. James Harden acquired via trade. Dwight Howard signs as a free agent. Then Trevor Ariza comes in, signs a four-year deal, and Ty Lawson acquired from Denver this offseason. Two very different ways to build 
cores that each team hopes will be around titles for years to come. Golden State has already won one, and Houston has improved its win total each of the first four seasons that Kevin McHale has been at the helm last year, culminating in a five-game loss in the Western Conference Finals. And the goal, no matter how you decide to go about it, is to get perennial all-stars where you can imagine the best players on your team winning a championship. you got to give credit to Larry Riley, who drafted Steph Curry, started that off, and then Bob Myers has had some very good drafts to supplement the Curry pick. And on the other end, Daryl Morey made one of the great trades in NBA history in getting James Harden from Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned those Warriors drafts. You think about their starting lineup tonight as Brewer got whacked. Warriors tonight had a starting lineup where 60% of it was drafted in the same draft. Now Andrew Bogut out with a concussion, so Luke Walton saw his starting lineup of Festus Azili, Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes to go with Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry. Barnes, Green, and Azili were all part of the same 2012 draft for Golden State. Absolutely, and getting Azili back last year, along with Bogut, healthier, gave them great front court depth, inserting Draymond Green into the lineup. And then there, let's not forget Sean Livingston coming and Barbosa coming. Bob Myers has done, last year, did a masterful job of building a championship caliber roster. And then they had, you know, great coaching. The players played great. Hey, their training staff had a heck of a year. They, their guys were healthy all year. Yep. They, I mean, everybody in their organization should share in that title because they all did their jobs exceptionally well. Beverly has his pass bounced right back to him for two. See Sam Decker on the floor for Houston now as each team is emptied out the bench. Decker became a household name last year in the NCAA tournament. Starring at Wisconsin. I'm going to be very interested to see if they use Decker more as a big three mm. or a active shooting, driving, slashing four as he you know develops his NBA career. I, I liked that pick for Daryl Morey and the Rockets because Monte Yunus, Terrence Jones, they're both up contractually this year. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants a big piece of the big pie with all the NBA free agent money. And I'll be interested to see if they can sign both or they have to develop someone like Harrell or Decker and just pick one of those two guys to keep. Harrell fires that down with two hands. But Decker shot it so well from three in the NCAA tournament, but that really wasn't his game in college. He's a high percentage finisher and creative in between game. That's really where he separated himself and then got hot at the right time from deep in the tournament before ultimately getting cold in the final. Here comes Clark. Denied by KJ McDaniels and then another block that time from Harrell. And here's Decker. Good effort by McDaniels and by Harrell. And that's to me what KJ McDaniel has to he has to McDaniels has to do better is shoot it because his activity his athleticism is tremendous well the Houston Rockets will lose the first two games of the season at home for the first time in Houston history the first time since they were in San Diego back in the 60s 67 68 season and Golden State picking up right where they left off 112 92 the final Stephen Curry with 25 points, seven rebounds, six assists, and he is standing by with Chris Broussard. Steph, you didn't have 40 tonight. What was wrong? We came out and you know, started off the game like we were supposed to with a lot of energy. Defensively, we we, uh, we came out and did what we were supposed to do. So 
Uh, I don't need to score 40 every night for us to get a win, but uh, just trying to do my part. Two playoff games, two playoff uh, playoff opponents, two blowouts. You guys look like you're almost in midseason form. You feel that way? I mean, we got a long way to go, but this is obviously a great start. Uh, there's no championship hangover. We're all focused and committed to uh, the, the new journey. So, uh, you know, we got that celebration out the way, and now we're 2-0 and um, just on our way. So we just got to keep building. Uh, keep looking ahead. It looks like the defense is really playing with a lot of intensity. That's the that's the biggest part of our game. Our team is our versatility, um, being able to throw different lineups out there for different situations, but knowing our defense is going to hold us up. So no matter how we shoot, whether we're home on the road, we know that's that's what's going to help us get wins and what's help us win a championship. So uh, we got to rely on that. Thanks, Seth. See you, Thanks, guys. All right, well, Stephen Curry and the Warriors have started this new journey off on the same way they ended last year's. 112 to 92, the final tonight. That Warriors defense holding the Rockets under 37% shooting. And Golden State now 2-0. Houston is 0-2. Coming up next, it's Sports Center for producer Ed Fabishoff, director Ken Dennis, Chris Broussard, Jeff Van Gundy, our statistician Stevie LeBeau. I'm Ryan Rucco. The Warriors win it 112-92 to the final. Thanks for watching ESPN and good night from Houston.